so let's have a look at this thing. You got what? PlayStation 4? You got PC games? You got Nintendo Wii U? You even have the Nintendo Switch, but then you have like the classic Super Nintendo and Nintendo, but there's only a thousand games total? kind of this like selective build here it's on a two terabyte hard drive plug and play comes with launch box comes with the free version right so it is not the uh, paid for version you can absolutely upgrade on your own dime it's not too bad and i highly recommend it but um here's another one of these hard drives coming out of china and this one is as far as like at least it's only using one front end here it's using only launch box uh, but it's kind of weird because it's only two terabytes, yet it's priced a little high in my opinion. But um, I think some people are going to like it and what it comes with. So in this video, we'll go ahead and look at all the collections, what it comes with, so you get a games list. And then we'll do some gameplay to show you what the performance is like. And then I'll give you my final thoughts as far as like, you know, what what's up with this? How is it different than the other builds I've been reviewing? Uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So let's get into it. So as far as what's in concluded, you do have the little user manual here. It tells you to install, you know, everything uh, uh, specifically first. My computer's already done all that. I do like that they wrote this. You know, you are looking at a GTX 1660 or better if you want to play PS3, Switch, PS4. And I would 100% agree with you. Um, it does require a little bit higher spec. So I think that's good to keep in mind. The install me first. These are all the things you need to install if you've never installed a program like this before. But if you've done any kind of emulation on your computer before you know it's pretty you know standard stuff uh, mine you just double clicked uh, a lot of people get upset here they're like oh my god they're pirating launchbacks it sucks it sucks for the launchbox creators so no they're not they're using the free version of launchbox the same one anybody could download online uh, if you notice here i have a license file and if you look at the upper right hand corner here you can kind of read it says license to drew talks this is a license that i own it's my personal license that i put into this build it does not start like this um, to get started. For those of you who don't know, you can you, yours is gonna look like this, just like mine. There's just some premium features that you're not going to get. For example, you cannot use Big Box. Big Box is similar to like a hyperspin type of thing. Um, now, uh, with Big Box, uh, mine did not work very well. There's something going on there. So in case, if you're getting this build to work with Big Box, I have to say it did not work out of the box for me. You gotta mess with the themes a little bit more. There's some black markings, I think they, you know, butchered it up a little bit. Um, now, so here it is, all games. It's exactly 1,000 games. And uh, I, you might be thinking like, wow, you know, some of these builds are like, you know, 14,000 games. Well, the reason being is you got PS4 over here, PS3, Windows games. These things take up a ton of space. Wii U, Nintendo Switch, GameCube. These are huge, huge, huge uh, ROMs. So, um, what you're going to see, I'm going to go ahead and put on the, uh, let me zoom in a little bit more here so we can get a little bit better of a view. Zoom in so that you get a little bigger. And uh, you can even turn this off if you don't want to see the system over there. And uh, we can see the little games. In case you're curious what's on here. Um, so first off, we got 3DO. Um, here are the games. Uh, I, I did test it. It worked well. Um, I'll be doing some gameplay at the end of the video. Nintendo 64, uh, it also tells you at the bottom of the screen here, displaying 97 of 1,000 games. So back to 3DO, if you want just the overall count, it's 44, um, 97 on Nintendo 64. So this is kind of disappointing in my opinion. I would think just go ahead and slap on all 300, um, especially like why StarCraft 64, come on. That game, Star I love StarCraft. It's a PC game. It's like playing Warcraft 2 on, on the PlayStation. Like, yeah, you could do it. In my opinion, I'd way rather play on a PC. But uh, you do have, you know, Diddy Kong Racing, 007. I'll play that later. It does run very well. Um, so it does have some good games on it. And it does have the Mario game. So a lot of people are noticing on some of these um, hard drives, they're, they're, they're omitting the, um, you know, the Mario, the Nintendo titles. Um, now, uh, 71 Nintendo DS. Again, you know, you're, you are getting the best of the best games, you know, like New Super Mario Brothers, great game. Um, you're getting some good games on there, but you're not getting all the collections. So there's a lot, if you're looking for particular games, you know, this might not be for you. That being said though, let me do say how easy it is to drag a game and play on here is. So um, I'm just gonna scroll through these Nintendo games. Again, Nintendo only 109. And mind you, Nintendo had like 700 plus games on it. So, you know, 
you got Duck Hunt, Super Mario, tra- meet, Track Meet, all in one, three in one game. You got Tetris, you got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, uh, do you even have Zelda? No Zelda? I feel like that's a sin right there. Come on, they gotta have Zelda. But uh, you can easily drag and drop games on here. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. You literally could just download a ROM and drag it into LaunchBox and it'll automatically prompt you with everything you need to do. So I do like that, how user-friendly this is. Um, So back to hard drives and and why I like hard drives is, you know, like this game right here, Mario Party 5, um, or some of the Zeldas, or... um, uh, Metroid Prime. Do they have Metroid Prime? Yeah. These games are ridiculously expensive. I mean, Luigi's Mansion. These games are ridiculously expensive if we were to actually go and get these games. And because Nintendo no longer supports them, you know, this is one of the ways you can play it without basically paying an arm and a leg. So Nintendo Switch. This is where you will need a more powerful computer. I do not recommend this hard drive if you have an older computer without a dedicated graphics card. Um, these games will just not run. It is a hard drive, though, so you could definitely bring it around, bring it to a friend's house, put it in a different computer, um, things like that. It's plug and play from that regard. So um, I'm going to give you my roundup later, but just know that this isn't a 100,000 games uh, build. It's more of a, a, a little, like, I wonder what's here. Okay, here we go. Let's I information. No, that Okay, this is Mario Kart 8. It's missing uh, artwork. Uh, you could change the different image groups. We could do like uh, carts. Do they have the carts? There you go. You can do CDs. But again, it's missing some artwork here. <laughs> Not doing so well. Clear logos maybe? All right. We, again, we're missing some logos there. Um, so let's go back to boxes here. Oh, there you go. It showed up. Okay. It was just maybe a little lag. Okay. So I like bo- I found boxes are the most complete as far as viewing these games within LaunchBox. And uh, Sega Dreamcast. Uh, 40 games and Sega Saturn. Uh, like I said, I'll be doing some gameplay later, but uh, Dreamcast can play on a very slow computer. Um, doesn't require much. Sega Saturn, a little bit more. PS1, um, you know, can play on a very low end computer. So there's 117 here. And the game I played did have music in it, but, um, you know, I didn't test every single game. PS2, you got. 122, okay. So here's where the majority of your two terabytes is. I can tell you right now, is in these PS2 games. Large collection here. PS2, and but here's where I, I, like, I wouldn't have included any of these Guitar Heroes. Like, I understand you can emulate them, but most people buying this are not going to be doing Karaoke Revolution. They're not going to be doing Guitar Hero. So I think that's where I wonder, like, who comes up with these ideas on what ROMs to include and what ROMs not to include? or what games to include and what games not to include. Uh, this is actually a really good game for anybody that wants to, who likes to ride motorcycles. It has very, it was one of the first very accurate uh, motorcycle games. Uh, so what do we have here? Silent Hill Homecoming. Okay, so it's there. The box is there. It's just kind of weird. See, maybe we go back and then back in. Yeah, there you go. Now it loaded. Um, so you got PS3 here. And then PS4. You don't see this very often. You got The Witcher, Spider-Man, God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2. So there is like, they. I thought they made some good decisions there with the ROMs. Sony PSP, 94 games. So again, uh, these are fairly large files. So nice to have these on there. No Heroes Allowed. Kind of a funky artwork there. The Warriors. You got Worms, Tron. All right, SNES or Super Nintendo. Uh, again, these are so small files. I wish they just gave you all 700 and whatever SNES games. Again, I don't understand it. Um, there's only 70 here. So finally, they did give you Zelda. They did give you Chrono Trigger. They gave you Contra. That's good. They gave you the Donkey Kongs, although you don't get number three. Um, Sim City, cool. Mario, you got Kart, you got RPG, you got All Stars. See, again, you have the two All Stars here. Yeah, kind of random. Yoshi's Island, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. So, there, you know, there's a lot of really good ones on here. You got Killer Instinct, Jurassic Park. Okay. Now, Windows. This is something that you probably weren't expecting. So, yeah, it does come with some Windows games as well. You got Battletoads. You got Cuphead. So, I will be playing. Uh, I played both Ninja Turtles and I played something a little bit more graphically intense like Titanfall 2. And they both ran uh, well for me.
Um, so there you have it. That's all your games. Um, you could search for a game by typing it in. You can change, you know, the way you want to sort for it. Launchbox itself is awesome, but um, you know, it's this is the hard drive that comes with it, and that's how it's um, configured. So this is what you're getting here. You're getting the two controllers, and you're getting the hard drive and the box. The box is very generic. Um, inside the hard drive, let's go ahead and open it. It's only a two terabyte drive. It's only 5,400 RPM. It actually pops right off. They're not really even trying to hide it at all. Uh, for those of you interested in what kind of drive it is, you can see there on your screen. Let me zoom in for you. And uh, yeah, that's it. It does have a little LED light on the this, this little three bars here are an LED light um, and is slightly padded. All right, so that's what you're getting there. And then the two controllers, my review on the controllers, they actually, I, I thought they looked really cool at first. They looked like 8-bit dough. And they actually had some good weight to them. But as you take a closer look here, you'll notice this just looks kind of dull. There's no LED lights anywhere. They're actually kind of on the on the medium weight size weight. I really liked them. Um, but uh, And they do have a rumble pack, by the way, and they do work. It rumbled when I was using the controller. So for those reasons, it's pretty good. I also, you should know that if you're new to all this, it might be good to get the controllers they plug and play. Um, although some of the controls were wrong, 90% of the controls were correct. So for those of you who don't want to like map your controls and all that, you know, they're they're very mediocre controllers. They're not awful, but they're not great either. 8-bit dough, Xbox 360 controllers would blow these out of the water. Do you know those back buttons are not analog? So like if you're playing a Switch game or a game that can utilize, you know, the the different sensitivity on those back buttons is not going to work. Um, but just for an everyday, just average controller, it's fine. They are wired as well. So if you were to put all this into, you know, I think the hard drive is $50 at most uh, retail, and these controllers are probably $15, $20 at most individually retail. And then obviously they're making them or buying them in bulk much, much, much cheaper. But uh, in case you're wondering as far as like a parts build list, what exactly hardware wise you're getting, that's what you're uh, getting here. Now for the games, you can see here Nintendo 64. This is where one of the binds was actually off. You can see my back button that shoots is also like the view button to go up. So as I shoot, it moves the, 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 the gun up. So, um, so I could fix that in the controls, but just something I saw. As far as performance wise, it's running really great. So the N64 works good. Uh, you're gonna find that with most N64 games, especially if you have a, a better computer. Now here's PlayStation 4, all right? And uh, it's running just fine, but mind you, I have a really powerful computer here. I have a RTX 3070 Ti. I have uh, the 12th gen Intel processor, i7. So um, it should run good. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you wanna play those PS4 games, they will run uh, if you have a 1660 or better uh, graphics card. But yeah, you just double click it. Um, when it comes to the Playstations, um, and the Wii and things, if it's your first time loading the console for the first time, the emulator does have to kind of, you know, catch up with the generating uh, shadows and shaders and things like that. So here you have Black for PS2. So we're on PlayStation 2 now. We did N64, we did PS4, and then we have PS2. And uh, as you see, it's running really well. Um, next, we're gonna get into Titanfall 2, and then we're gonna get into uh, Shredder's Revenge, both PC emulation, and then we're gonna finish off with a Switch game, which is the um, the uh, CTR, Crash Bandicoot uh, Racing. So let's talk a little bit about this build, what I think. Okay, um, it's really, it's a little expensive. You know, you can get the five terabyte build for around the same price. That being said, the five terabyte build does not have Nintendo Switch, it doesn't have PS4, it doesn't have PS3, it doesn't have the Windows, or it actually did have the Windows games. It actually had better Windows games. Um, so, you know, you're always making these trade-offs. Um, these things are coming out of China, and so there's a lot of just little stupid stuff that, you know, you would be able to figure out on your own if you were, you know, if you spoke English, for example, or if you grew up with these things, you would know which games to include, which games not to include, or, you know, the proper, uh, controls, whatever else. So there's a lot of little things like that, and, uh, these, these people do hack up these things. Like, it's always, I do want to make this clear with the, all the hard drives I review, all this stuff is free and you can do it yourself online and that's the way you should do it. But that's not the use case. There's plenty of people that want this plug and play and just want to buy it because maybe their broadband connection is too slow, maybe they're too intimidated, maybe they don't have the time, whatever. So, um, you know, it's always better to get it for free. Let me tell you all that. But um, with these builds, you know, there's gonna be pros and cons. So. 
Um, the uh, pros are, man, this has a wide variety of collections. It totally skipped over the Ataris and the Commodore 64s and the computer systems and went straight to the Nintendo consoles. It skipped over Sega completely. Did you see that? No Sega Genesis, no Sega Mega Drive, no Sega CD. Oh, it did have Sega Saturn, right? So they had Sega Saturn. Uh, and then it's like Dreamcast, Switch. So uh, if you if this is your era, you know, the, the late 90s, early 2000s, you know, then this or and mid, you know, 2010s, uh, then this is a really cool setup for you. And uh, even though it only has a thousand games, these thousand games, if you're into them, will keep you occupied for years on end if that's what you want. So for the pros are, you know, and I do like Launchbox. So I love Launchbox. You know, the game list is give or take. Some people are gonna like it. Some people are not gonna like it. Um, and it was plug and play. It's one, you know, one front end to handle with and you uh, can, you know, support Launchbox by buying the premium uh, version of it. Now the cons, uh, it's only two terabytes. It's kind of a small hard drive. Uh, oh, something I didn't show in the video is you can drag and drop your ROMs. I mentioned it, but I didn't show it. You literally just got to go download a ROM or if you have a ROM from another hard drive or something like that, you could drag it into this one. But that being said, you're not going to have that much hard drive space. So you could buy this and then transfer it to a bigger hard drive or transfer it somewhere and then add on to it. You have some flexibility there. But um, it is really easy to kind of customize and a good starting point, I think, potentially for some people. So now the cons. Um, it's kind of ridiculous what this is priced as, considering you get a five terabyte for around the same price. Um, so the actual hardware you're getting. Um, the controllers are, again, if you're a purist, if you really like to game, I would recommend an Xbox 360 controller or an 8-bit Doe controller and just get the hard drive itself if that is what you want. Um, and then, um, you know, the quality of what you're getting, the hard drive itself is a refurbished, you know, what, you know, it's only a 5,400 RPM hard drive. You know, for those reasons, it's not great. Um, you, as you notice, the artwork was not set up properly. The shaders, all the default emulator settings, things like that are probably on default. You know, there's some optimization that could be done that's not going to be done for you. So there's a lot of little things here. The biggest question I get, though, is, you know, what's the difference between this one and the five terabyte and the four terabyte? And a lot of it has to do with the game collection. A lot of it has to do with the front end that they're using. And uh, a lot of it has to do with um, how they put it together. Um, some is gonna have a lot more care and TLC in it, and others are just gonna slap it on there and call it uh, done. That being said, I have seen a huge improvement over the years in both these you know, TV boxes and things like that. So the future is bright, we'll see what happens, but uh, that's what I think, let me know y'all think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.